Mutu, come here. I heard you refused to give your bag and slate to your sister. But, Appa, it's mine. I need it. You don't need it anymore, Kanna, because you're finished with your school. But, Appa, school reopens on Monday. My friend Selvam, Shakti, Mani will go to school. I will also go with them. Look, they're all boys. You're a girl and you're finished with your school. Why? Boys can only go to school? Girls can't go? It's not fair. Now stop asking questions and just listen to me. Give your slate to your sister. I can't. Don't you dare talk to your father like this, Puto. If they take only boys to school, I'll also dress up as a boy and go. Puto, why are you crying? Appa says I should not go to school anymore. He wants me to give my sled to my sister. Don't worry, I will talk to him. Very stubborn. Ridiculous. Welcome sir, welcome. Welcome sir, ah. please sit down. Why is Muthu crying? Your student is very adamant sir. She doesn't seem to understand that as per our tradition, girls are not allowed to continue education after 5th class. Amma, Muthu is a brilliant student, not only in her class, but also in the entire school. Sir, I plead with you. Please don't stop her education. If you think money is the criteria for not sending her to school, if you don't mind, I could even pay for her education. That's very kind of you, sir, but uh, that's not the reason. It's deviating from our tradition. The society will not accept this, sir. I'm sorry. Although the selfless offer of an exceedingly good human being opened the gates of knowledge to Muthu Lakshmi, the prevailing societal practice for girls to stop education after Standard 5 proved strong. Muthu was not allowed to continue her schooling. As a concession, she was made to get educated from home and went on to pass her metric exam as a private candidate. <laughs> Hey, Muthu has got admission in Maharaja College. I have to go tell her parents. What? Muthu is going to attend college with the boys? Oh God! Achacho, she will sit and study with the boys. Huh. Won't she be the only girl in class? In fact, the entire college. This is ridiculous. How could they let this happen? I am going to complain to the panchayat. Akka, Muthu has got admission in a big college. The Maharaja has given a special permission. She will sit behind a screen and attend classes. It seems the boys will wait for her to come out and only then come out. Kamalamaka, Muthu has come first in the whole university. From this prevailing scenario, in which a majority of women found themselves in most parts of India in the late 19th century, emerged a few like Muthu Lakshmi, who in some way or the other boldly expressed their wish to be treated on par with men. Throughout history, the Indian woman has had an ambivalent status. She has been concurrently perceived as a goddess and a slave. As we look back, during the ancient Hindu Vedic period of Sita, Damayanti and Savitri, Women were given equal status to men in every aspect of human life. But by the time Manu wrote his Hindu law, the woman had already become a commodity. A girl, as per Manusmriti, had to initially follow her father, later her husband, and in case of widowhood, her son. She had no independent status of her own. However, there have been several stories even during the 14th and 15th centuries where women were equally brave helping their husbands and sons in administering the country 
and even facing the enemies in war. Then came the Mohammedan times, where the parda system was followed, bringing in an iron curtain over women's education. Thus, the Middle Ages predominantly ensured the woman's position to be subordinate and customs evolved to deny her a rightful place in society. It was during this rather degrading scenario for women that a few decided to lift themselves and women around as well. On 8th May 1917, the Women's Indian Association, WIA for short, was formed by Dr. Annie Besant and Margaret Cousins to heed to the holistic welfare of the Indian woman. Dr. Annie Besant, an Irish theosophist, women's activist, writer and orator, supported the Irish Home Rule Movement throughout her life. As she came to India, she brought with her that spirit of a freedom fighter, established the Home Rule League, became the international president of the Theosophical Society, the first woman president of the Indian National Congress, and the first president of the WIA too. Her co-founders of the WIA were Margaret Cousins, an Irish Indian educationist and theosophist who later tuned our national anthem penned by Rabindranath Tagore, and Dorothy Jinarajadas, an Irish feminist, theosophist and musician. Indeed, WIA has been carried forward by several pillars of strength. WIA was the first women's association which brought together Indian women of all faiths from Kashmir to Kanyakumari to work for their common good beyond caste, creed and religion. Right from the beginning, WIA actively participated in the national scene by sending a women's delegation led by Dr. Rani Besant and Sarojini Naidu to meet with the Secretary of State Montague and the Viceroy Chemsford to request the franchisee for women. It was Sir C. Shankaran Nair of the South Borough Committee and Divan Bahadur M. Krishnan Nair of the Madras Legislative Council who stood rock-like for the cause of women's franchise. In a plea, Mrs. Sarojini Naidu writes, It is indeed a curious and startling irony of fate to refuse her, the Indian woman, a formal legislative sanction for a privilege which is already hers in spirit and substance. The Indian woman in the earlier days married as an adult, often as per her own free choice. But the situation changed in medieval times. Due to the growing insecurity after the golden age of the Guptas, keeping an adult and married daughter at home was becoming a security risk. There were possible dangers from cults involved in sexual mysticism, yet other growing risks from invading armies abducting girls into the harems of Nawabs and Sultans. A combination of these factors resulted in lowering the age of marriage. Marriage between a teenage boy and a little girl of six or seven became common. With the increase in educated women in the Madras Presidency, the WIA, which had grown into a 4,000-member organization by 1926, actively campaigned against child marriage. The first All India Women's Conference unanimously passed a resolution condemning the custom of early marriage, following which the Madras Legislative Council, led by Dr. Muthulakshmi Reddy, brought about a resolution that the minimum age of marriage for girls should be fixed at 16. Meanwhile, a bill for the prevention of child marriage was introduced by Rao Saib Harbila Sarda at the national level, which provoked much opposition from the orthodox 
section of the Hindu society. And so, the Madras legislative was asked to wait to bring the resolution into force. The memorandum sent forthwith from the Madras legislative emphasized the fact that the orthodox deputation opposing the bill did not even represent 2% of the population of the presidency, thereby strengthening the support to pass the bill at the national level. Eventually, the Child Marriage Restraint Act or Sharda Act was passed in September 1929, making it the first social reform issue taken up by the organized women folk of India. Those were the times of the cultural era, the Chola period when magnificent temples were built. And some girl children were chosen and ceremoniously dedicated to the temple to pledge their life to enhancing the arts. Devadasis or maids of God as they were called were a privileged lot whose economics were completely taken care of by the royalty along with the maintenance of the temple. Even the public revered them as they were not merely dedicated to the service of God but were formally married to God with a Thali ceremony. Unfortunately, as years rolled by, the economic support from the royalty to the temples began to decline and so began the degradation of the Devadasi clan. When their economic foundation collapsed, some women who were proficient in the arts earned a living by stage performances, while most others were forced to use their art form to attract male attention to earn a living as a sex worker. The most unfortunate part being getting a girl child ready with years of training only to be sacrificed for satiating man's lust. Feeling deeply for this violation of human rights, the WIA, led by Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy, who was by then the Vice President of the Madras Legislative Assembly, framed a bill for abolition of the Devadasi system. The bill successfully came into force in February 1929 and the government issued orders to the various district collectors to enfranchise the various Devadasi gifts and thus free them from the obligation of service. The voice of the woman grew stronger by the year with organizations like WIA giving her the courage to voice her views. A unanimous opinion gathered momentum that universal adult suffrage was the only just method of securing representation of women in the democratic constitution. When the first round table conference was announced in 1929, the government of India nominated Begum Shah Nawaz and Radha Bhai Subarayan to the round table. They presented a memorandum with a clause that the wives and widows of property-holding men voters might be granted votes. The WIA strongly opposed this. Three women representatives from the three main women's organizations in India were invited to give evidence before the Joint Select Committee of the Round Table. Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy was deputed to represent WIA. The memorandum made by these three women read, By merit and merit alone do we wish to find and we are confident we shall find our rightful place in the council and federal legislatures of our country. It naturally follows that we are opposed to reservation of seats for ourselves and are wholeheartedly in favour of joint electorates by which means alone we are convinced can India rise to her full stature. In 1947, on its independence from the United Kingdom, India granted equal voting rights to all men and women, far ahead of several countries in the world. To strengthen the woman's voice, WIA published a monthly journal, Stri Dharma, which carried exploratory, informative and inspiring articles on several topics for women. A 
Apart from man-made challenges, there were those existential challenges that loomed gigantically over the people, casting a dark shadow of remorse. A few months after Muthulakshmi lost her sister to cancer, as a medical apprentice, she was witness to an incident. You've done exceedingly well, my dear. After five years of a follow-up, I'm delighted to say we're going to close your case and secure it. That's so wonderful, Doctor. I can't believe this news. Thank you so much, Doctor. Doctor, do you mean that she's been completely cured of her rectal cancer? Yes. May I ask how? Interested, aren't you? Meet me tomorrow during break and I'll explain how. That spirit of confidence that Muttu had seen in the eyes of Sir Ernest and his patient in the ability to cure cancer ignited a spark of longing in Muttu Lakshmi to instill that confidence in the minds of doctors and patients alike in India. Back home, she moved a resolution at the Madras Medical College for the establishment of a self-contained cancer hospital. A few years later, WIA launched the Cancer Relief Fund under the dynamic leadership of Sarojini Varadappan, who went on to become the president of WIA and years later received Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award in the country for her social service. With additional aid from the Ministry of Health and the Government of India, the foundation for the first block of Cancer Institute was laid in 1955. Six decades later, the Cancer Institute has grown to be one of the best equipped hospitals for the treatment of cancer in the whole of Asia, initially under the guidance of Dr. Muthulakshmi Reddy's son, Krishnamurti, and later under the dedicated leadership of Dr. V. Shanta. With years rolling by, a lot of institutionalized oppression of women were lifted. Several laws were enforced to support their growth. The cages were broken, but she didn't know she was free and needed help to fly. We needed forums to work on increasing awareness of her rights, educating her to tackle life situations, throwing light on what she was capable of and empowering her spirit to instill a sense of courage to make her self-confident. Over the last 100 years, WIA has stepped in to perform all these roles, aiding in expanding the Indian woman's potential in every sense of the term, making her self-sufficient in the process. Several schemes are being carried out under the dynamic leadership of Padma Venkatraman, the current president of WIA. All along, we were thinking about women empowerment, economic empowerment, social empowerment. And uh, now we come across in many places, women have gone uh, much higher in their thinking, in their approach, in their attitude. Uh, but men are lagging behind with their ideas of their mothers and uh, the elders and uh, how they were, their attitude towards the sons and husbands. Uh, we feel that uh, both the genders should be uh, taken together as we progress in the society. Uh, otherwise, we are creating unnecessary conflict. Over 40 years back, I was a resident of that hostel for a few months um, just before 
finishing my medical examination to get into the uh, Indian police service. Our uh, counseling center provides assistance to the people who approach us because they are uh, afraid to go to the police stations. So the, our counselors uh, uh, accompany them and also provide the needed assistance to meet the police uh, so that they will be able to present their problems. And our legal I mean, clinic uh, provides assistance for people not knowing what are their rights and how to approach the either the court or the police to get the solutions. bones Occasional training could occur. The awareness program could occur. Now, cancer awareness, or kidney awareness could occur. That could occur. Health awareness. The slum level, slum boy, the health awareness. All could occur. Now, makkal can all be done. Now, the people who are in the world are very good. Now, the people who are So I started in 1979, then with leprosy help I did some art projects, exhibitions, bookmaking and the profit I sponsored to leprosy colonies in Indoor and Kandua. And then I created this Bindu Art School, a painting school for people affected by leprosy. We said to them, you stop begging and start painting. So we give them monthly a stipend and at the end of the year they get the amount, the percentage of the sold of paintings. <laughs> சொல்லி <laughs> தரோம் <laughs> Thank you.
வந்து தே வென் தே கோ அவுட் ஆஃப் த ஸ்கூல் இந்த சொசைட்டியில் அவங்க ரொம்ப ஃபேஸ் பண்ணுறாங்க ஆப்ரேஷன் பேர் ப்ரெஷர் எல்லாம் இதை இவங்கள இந்த ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸை கைட் பண்ணுறதுக்கு போத் த பேரண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் எம்ப்ளாய்டு அதனால் அவங்களுக்கு டைம் இருக்கிறதில்ல டீச்சர்ஸும் அகாடமிக் சைடு தான் கான்சென்ட்ரேட் பண்ணுறதுனால நாங்கள் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஸ்கூல்ஸ்க்கு யூத் எம்பவர்மெண்ட் ப்ராஜெக்ட் ஆல் ஸ்கூல்ஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் கவர்மெண்ட் எய்டட் ஸ்கூல்ஸ் கார்பரேஷன் ஸ்கூல்ஸ் சிபிஎஸ்இ ஸ்கூல்ஸ் ஸ்டேட் போர்ட் மெட்ரிகுலேஷன் எல்லாத்தையும் நாங்கள் இன்க்ளூட் பண்ணி ஹண்ட்ரட் ஸ்கூல்ஸ்க்கு ப்ளஸ் டூ ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ்க்கு யூத் எம்பவர்மெண்ட் கவுன்சிலிங் கைடன்ஸ் ஆஃப் எஜுகேஷன் டிசிப்ளின் மாரல் வேல்யூஸ் எல்லாத்தையும் இன்க்ளூட் பண்ணி நாங்கள் அவங்களுக்கு செஞ்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கோம் காலேஜ் அப்படிங்கிறது சாரதா வித்யாலயம் மாதிரி ஒரு சின்ன ஸ்கூல் கேம்பஸ்க்குள்ளே அடங்குற ஒரு விஷயம் அது அங்கே எப்படிப்பட்டவங்களாம் வருவாங்க பாருங்கள் WIA carries the presence of Mahatma Gandhi through his ashes embedded in this campus in all its activities. 100 years in the life of an organization is also an important milestone because it provides an opportunity to reflect to pause for a while and to reflect from where we started what we have achieved where we are today and what objectives we would like to have a century has flown since the inception of the WIA and we find women as stoppers in almost all fields of work It's time to reset the axis and pursue fresh goals. It's time to empower and make every woman feel responsible for her life, her potential. It's time she learns to celebrate her life. Tagore described she is no goddess to be worshiped nor is she an object of pity to be brushed aside if she is to walk side by side and share the duties of life then you will know her true self <laughs>